Welcome back to the New York Jets franchise, everyone. Today, the Jets take on the rival from up the coast, the New England Patriots. Deshaun Watson is doing a superior job of leading this offense, especially in the passing arena. The Patriots boast the number eight passing offense in the NFL, but they face the number one defense today against the, this Jets squad. I feel the real test will be seeing if the New York offense can move the ball against a very tough New England defense. Now, the D-line is going through some rebuilding, but it really has some great talent to build on. The secondary is going to be where the challenge resides. Players like Gilmore, Jackson, Evans, and back at strong safety, they were able to sign free agent Blake Stratton. That's proving to be all over the field and one to watch out for. If the Jets can get the run established in this game, though, Donald may not even have to worry about the secondary. But as I've come to appreciate, New England is anything but predictable. Let's get set for the Patriots and the Jets on the Football Freaks Sports Network. Second year man out of Rutgers, Matt Reese, is back deep in the end zone. Takes a knee and it'll come out to the 25 yard line. The Patriots led by Deshaun Watson. Only three interceptions all season long. That is going to be key, I think, as the ball game goes on. And the first play from scrimmage is a run up the middle. Sony Michelle gets the carry and it's only a three yard gain. And there is the starting lineup of uh, the Patriots. And Keel Harry, Galladay both on the outside and those should be looked to very carefully as targets for Watson to try and hit. Now on third and seven, a fake handoff, play action pass and it's complete. Kenny Galladay on the up and in route. And it's a first down at the 44 yard line. Michelle alone in the backfield, the play action pass. And it's complete rookie tight end Omar Roth picking that up. And it's a first down for the Patriots. Royce Freeman checks in and is tackled at the 41. Third and seven. And that bounces off Horton and <laughs> he bounces off of Freeman who gets in the way. And on fourth down, Jake Bailey drops it at the five and it's downed at the one. The Jets in a hole. Up the middle goes Jacobs and he's out to the five yard line. Now second and five. Jackson gets taken down in the backfield. Hassan Reddick takes him down at the four. That is going to bring up third and seven. Darnold drops back, throws over the middle, and it's incomplete intended for Chris Herndon. So punting out of his end zone. Oh, my goodness. This punt is blocked and picked up by rookie Randy Perry. And that is blocked by, I believe, it was Blake Stratton that broke through the line. And he gets his first block as a Patriot. So now from the two-yard line, Michelle goes for one. And now on second and goal, a play-action pass. Incomplete, then there's a flag on the play holding against the offense, and that is David Andrews, the center, that is guilty of the infraction. So back to the 11-yard line. Michelle gets caught in the backfield to back to the 13. Now Watson out of the shotgun. Throws to the end zone. Touchdown, Nikhil Harry. Oh my goodness, that was, I, I don't know how he caught that right in front of Ramirez. 
And Ramirez didn't even look like he went for the ball. And he didn't. Tried to knock it away, but he didn't go for the ball. And the Patriots lead 7 to nothing after a blocked punt. Now the Jets trying to move the ball. Darnold throws over the middle. Complete to Ross, and that is a first down. Last week's numbers, he only had two receptions for 52 yards, but there was a touchdown in there. Second and 11 now. Jackson with the screen pass, spins, and he gets all the way into Patriot territory at the 37. Now on third down, Darnold tries to hit Ross, and it's broken up by Gilmore. So that brings on Trent Lyon for a 54-yard field goal, and it's good. And makes the score now 7-3 in favor of the Patriots. After a New England three and out, Jackson up the middle for a five-yard gain. Make that four. Second and six. And the give is to Jackson again. Has lots of room out to the left side. And finally tackled at the 35. Third and 12. And down goes Darnold. John Saunders makes the play back at the 45. And that brings up fourth and 20 for the Jets. And they'll have to punt. Second and eight for the Patriots. And the ball is batted up and intercepted by Ja'Kai Polite. Batted up in the air by Demarcus Faulkner. And that puts the Jets in excellent field position at the 25. And down goes Darnold again. Hassan Reddick comes in unchallenged and Darnold gets sacked at the 29. So that brings up third and 14. The pass is incomplete, knocked away by J.C. Jackson, intended for Arsenal. And that brawl bring out Trent Lyon for a 46-yard field goal. This one is good, and it is now 7-6. to six. With New England on top with just a point separating the two after another Patriot Three and out. Jackson goes down in the backfield, tackled by J.C. Jackson from the Patriots. And Darnold connects with Ross to give the Jets a first down. And that takes us to the two-minute warning with your score 7-6. to six. Darnold back to pass, and he is sacked. Again, Blake Stratton gets to him back at the 46. So seven, second and 17, and it's intercepted. Darnold trying to go down the middle, and Dorian O'Daniel is there. Got position on Chris Herndon, and comes down with the interception for the Patriots, ending the threat by the Jets to take the lead before halftime, 58 seconds left, 55. And the pass out to the left is incomplete, broken up by Marcus May. Fourth and six, and the punt drops at the three and is downed at the five. Now what will the Jets do? And it looks like they're just going to take a knee and take this into the locker room. Seven to six is your score. Each quarterback accounting for an interception, but otherwise it has been all defense. Now let's go to Eurocat Baby for a halftime report. This game is shaping up to be all that we expected it to be. A defensive ball game in which neither team has been able to get to the 50-yard mark offensively. 
The Jets have yet to find the end zone and the Patriots have seven points on the board via a blocked punt that gave them the ball on the two. In other action, Buffalo is trying to maintain a share of the AFC East lead, but are finding it very difficult. They're going to need a superior effort in the second half because they're down 17 to seven, with just 30 seconds left in the first. Meanwhile, the Bears are being upset at the moment by division rival Detroit, and their seven and one record could go down in flames if the offense can't move the ball a little better than they have been. That seems to be the case here in Foxborough as well. Can the Jets find the end zone here in the second half? And can the defense continue to keep Deshaun Watson in check? Stay tuned to find out because more football action is straight ahead. Welcome back everyone to Gillette Stadium for second half coverage between the Jets and the Patriots. The Pats lead by only a point in this defensive battle. Sam Darnold with only a passer rating of 10 and a completion percentage of 30 will have to have an outstanding second half if the Jets hope to walk off this field with a win. Will the Jet defense be able to contain Watson for another half of football or will he be able to keep the Patriots on top? Let's find out as the second half gets underway. Donald in the Jets from the 25 yard line. Jackson the single back. Donald back to pass. Throws and it's off the hands of O'Daniel and incomplete. Second and 10. Donald back to pass again. Oh, it's the same exact play. This time complete to Jackson out to the 43 yard line. Pass this time, complete up the numbers to Herndon and it's a first down to the 43 of the Patriots. And down goes Darnold. Taken down by Saunders again, way back at the 49 yard line in jet territory. So that brings up third and 18. And catching that on the right side numbers is Rig. Howard, first down, an 18-yard gain. Now Jackson up the middle to the 27-yard line. That goes for a five-yard gain. And Donald throws complete to Herndon, and he's in there for the touchdown. Donald found the matchup that he was wanting, and it was... Herndon against Bentley, and Bentley just couldn't keep up with the big tight end. And that was a score for the Jets going for two, and it's incomplete. Herndon is down, injured, and we're going to have to find out how serious that is. As far as I can tell, he's not on the sideline, so... Probably in the locker room. This brings up third and six. Deshaun Watson back. And that is knocked down by Adams. Bringing up fourth down. And they have to kick. Now the Jets from the 17. Across the middle. Hurling it deep downfield. And Ross catches it for a 47-yard reception. Now from the 37. Darnold is hit, fumbled the football. Big Myron Burris picks up the ball and rumbles all the way down to the 10 yard line of the Jets. Darnold losing the handle on the ball, gives it to the Patriots. The handoff going to Michelle up the middle and loses two yards. Now third and 13. Michelle to the 10 yard line. I'm not sure why they ran up the middle, but Chris Gonzalez records this, the tackle. And that will bring out Wyatt Sands and he puts through the short field goal. And it is now 12 to 10 in favor of the Jets. Donald now throws over the middle complete 
That is Jordan Thomas who's in for the injured Chris Herndon and he is out for the rest of the game because of a sprained hip pointer. Now third and one. Wesco up the middle, gets the first down to the 45 yard line of the Patriots. Second and 12. And over the middle, it's incomplete. Dawson Knox can't hold on to it. Bringing up third and 12. The pass along and is incomplete intended for Terry McLaurin, but uh, J.C. Jackson is there in coverage. So after a Patriot three and out again, Jacobs up the middle for a five yard gain. Third and five and Jordan can't get to the sticks. That gives the Patriots back the ball at the 24 yard line. And that is broken up by Julian Love. Second and 10. The pass is caught by Michelle, taken down by Marcus May, and that brings us to the two-minute warning. Watson on fourth down. Pass complete. Tackled at the 43-yard line is Nikhil Harry, and Horton catches one for a seven-yard gain. Back to pass again. Completes over the middle to Michelle and down to the 33. The Patriots forcing the Jets into the hurry up offense. Another first down and this is a touchdown. Completed to Kenny Galladay, a 15 yard pass with only 36 seconds left on the clock. And I don't know how the Jets are going to pull themselves out of this one. The Patriots go eight plays, 76 yards in two minutes and four seconds to take the lead in this ball game, 17 to 12. Now Donald all alone in the backfield, throws long and complete to Terry McLaurin at the 47 yard line and a timeout. Back to pass again. And this one is complete to Howard at the seven yard line. Back to pass again. Darnold gets sacked. Holding on to it just a fraction too long. So now from the 17 yard line, the pass is complete to Howard and he's tackled at the one. And the game is over. The Patriots have won 17 to 12. And that is heartbreaking. I thought the Jets were gonna score on that last play for sure. But what a wild finish here in Foxborough. What did I say at the top of this broadcast about the Patriots not being predictable? The really hard thing to swallow is that New York contained this outstanding passing attack of the Pats up until the two minute warning at the close of the game. <laughs> then somewhere Watson started finding his receivers left and right, literally. They just look like a different team in those final two minutes. The really odd thing is that Darnold was completing some sensational passes as well, and I'm not so sure that Howard didn't roll over O'Daniel and actually make it into the end zone on that last play. If you take a look at the offensive yards, you see the Patriots with a 133 total, and 76 of those yards came on that last New England drive, which means that the New York defense held the Patriots to only 57 yards for the rest of the game. It's one of those things that makes you just go, hmm. A definite head scratcher, I would say. 
Darnold was responsible for both an interception and a fumble, but we can't blame him for that block punt, as much as we'd like to, that is. Neither quarterback had a very good day overall, and it showed for the most part, well, other than the final three minutes, that is. But as bad as they played, what was worse was the play of the running backs. Sony Michelle had 16 carries for a total of five yards. And the combo of Jackson and Jacobs combined for a total of 25 yards. The New York wideouts accumulated a bunch of yards coming down the stretch, accounting for almost 150 yards between Howard and Ross. But take a look at the drop passes in this game. If both receiving squads would have been able to hold on to the ball a bit better, we could have seen a much different ball game, I would think. The defenses on both sides really proved to be the heroes in this game. Uh, let's just take two categories, for instance. Tackles for loss in sacks. 20 tackles for loss and six sacks in the game is just awesome. There was quite a reversal from last week's game where Donald didn't get sacked once to this week where he went down five times. Only one of those was attributed to the performance of the O-line, so we know that Donald was either getting flushed out of the pocket or was doing a lot of scrambling on his own. And I tend to think that he backed out of the pocket a lot more than last week, and that's the reason for all the sacks. From a kicking standpoint, it was nice to see that Trent Lyon was able to find the middle of the goal post this week instead of, of the outside. I would think that he needs a, to be a little bit more consistent, but after all, there isn't much room for time at that position. Not in this league. Even the rookies need to be a, at a pretty good level if they're going to make it in the NFL. Things aren't going to get any easier for the Jets because it's back home to face Baker Mayfield and the Cleveland Browns. Although the AFC North is having real issues this season, that doesn't mean that the Browns aren't a very talented team. Mayfield and OBJ are serious obstacles in the passing attack, and Nick Chubb is an outstanding halfback. From a defensive standpoint, I only see one glaring issue, and that is their starting left end is very weak. And if the Jets plan on running the ball, they're going to need to do it on that side of the D-line, I think. Looking at the rest of the defense, I don't see anything that jumps out to me as a weakness, so it could be another challenging week for the New York offense. That's going to do it for this week's episode of the New York Jets franchise here on the Football Freaks Sports Network. The New York defense did its job today, and I wish that I could say the same for the performance of the offense. I would have to think that if they don't play with a little bit more gusto come next week against the Browns, the Jets could be in serious trouble. The defense is not the issue. Even with that late score by the Patriots this week, the offense needs to roll a little better down the field. Will the talented offense of the Browns be able to bring down the Jets' defense? Tune in to find out when the Jets meet the Browns in MetLife Stadium. And until then, for Eurocat Baby and the rest of the crew, this is Husker Eurocat saying so long for now and have a good day, everyone.